Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm Jessie and this is the Knit Up and Die podcast, episode 94, Fell Off the Planet. Wow, it's been a long time. It has been entirely too long and I am so grateful to be back. I have been very sick and uh, it's amazing how much the flu can knock you for a loop. And uh, I just, I couldn't be happier to be sitting here and talking to you today. So, hi! <laughs> As always, I'm going to start out with my thank yous. Special thank you go out to all of my subscribers, both new and ongoing. I love you guys. What you see here is really all about you. This means the world to me because hopefully I'm giving you something. Um, I always want to hear from you. I always want to hear what you're doing, what you're knitting, what you're dreaming about, what you'd like to see demonstrated, what you'd like me to talk about. I am open and receptive to all of your suggestions. Warm welcome goes out to Anja Ganja, Marcio, Tina, Beta, Leslie.com, Ms. Teagle, Koba Vandenberg, Karen Deswart, Tara Mitchell, thank you all for adding me to your day. Special love and thanks go out to Tara, Diane, Allison, Barbara, Faye, Julie, Janelle, Erica, Adriana, Wayne, Sonia, Patricia, Lisa Lette, Cappy, Kath, Benty, Christy, Nietzsche, Charlotte, Chris, Roseanne, Linda, Marie, Eve, David, Donna, Betty Ann, Scott and John, Jessica, Kate, Terry, Janet at Unwound, Monica, Bex, Carolyn, Nancy, and Rachel. Much love goes out to my Zoom family. I've been so sick I haven't even hung out in the Zoom room. Robert, Roz, Paula, Brian, Jen, Elizabeth, Nicole M, Nicole B, Katie, Shirley, Tracy, and Georgian. I think of you often and I hope to get back there soon. A warm hello and thank you go out to all of my patrons. You honor me. Thank you so much for your love and support. So, like I said, I fell off the planet. It all started just before Christmas. My husband and I had gone on a road trip and I got sick, like, boom, right before that happened. And uh, have vague <laughs> memories of that trip. A lot of a lot of cough syrup, a lot of cough drops. Um, I had programmed, had, had filmed my Christmas greeting in advance so that I knew while I was out on the road I could launch that out to you guys and wish you a Merry Christmas. And I'm so grateful that I did because had I not, there probably wouldn't have been many episodes at all. Um, I had caught a bad cold. I managed to muscle through that and then I got like another variation of the cold. <sighs> Ugh. Please, <laughs> if you're sick, stay home, don't bring it to work. Um, and and I, I dragged through this second version of the cold and then the universe just kicked me when I was down and I got the flu on top of all of it. Um, I did air episode 93 went out. What it, I think I was on my second cold at that point and it was all in my throat and I was coughing so badly. It, it was so hard to film that but it meant so much to me to get that first episode of the year out and I, I'm grateful that I muscled through. I'm grateful that I did because the flu just absolutely knocked me down. Um, it, as tempted as I was to try to live my life the way I normally do to read, to knit, to go to work, to go out to dinner, to celebrate things. I really had to stop everything. Not only was this flu exhausting, I have never slept so much in my life. In a four day period, I think I was awake a total of six hours. Um, just absolutely draining. But when you push too hard, all it does is weaken your immune system even more. And I learned that lesson the hard way a long time ago, a decade ago now, I guess, was the last time I had pneumonia. And that one was really, really scary and really dangerous. That hospitalized me. And so this year, when this flu hit, and it was all in my lungs, 
I was really scared and I really had to take time to drop out and do nothing. I slept a lot. I drank an awful lot of tea <laughs> and I slept even more and unfortunately everything suffered. Um, I dragged through work when I wasn't contagious. I did go to work and it would be everything that I could do that day was to get up, get dressed, eat my breakfast, go to work, try to remain cognitive, try to do my job and then get home and if I made it through dinner before going back to bed it was a wonder. It, it was really hard. Um, my husband was sick at the same time and both of us just really we're, we're coming out of the clouds now. It, it's been amazing. I, I can't believe that I lost better part of six weeks of my life to just being sick. I work very hard to remain healthy. I do a lot for my immune system. This one just was a triple punch and knocked me out. And I missed you guys. I had, it, it sounds foolish, but I had such a sense of guilt that I was letting you down by not doing my weekly podcast. And I would get up and I would prepare my, my sheet. And then I would just sit and think between coughs, how am I going to be able to do this? I have nothing to show. I have little to discuss. I'm going to cough through the entire thing. I'm then going to have to edit <laughs> around all of that and have offered nothing other than my presence. And unfortunately, I had to just say no repeatedly. And I feel bad about that because this is important to me and I did miss it. And it's not, um, yeah, I feel that I let you guys down. I do. But it's it's not it's not a crushing guilt. I how do I say this the right way? I'm disappointed. I, I'm disappointed. I would have liked for this not ever to have happened, believe it. Being sick is the worst. But I I wish that I could have overcome and still done all the things that I love to do and share that with you. It is what it is. But I'm healthy now. And yes, you probably still hear it in my voice. I'm still not 100%, but oh, even 70% <laughs> was better than where I was at. I was low. Um, thank you, everyone that reached out. Thank you for all of your support. Everyone that sent messages of concern. Everyone who sent get well messages. Everyone who sent holiday messages prior to that. Thank you. That really was, it, it was so important to me. It was so encouraging to me to know that people cared, that thank you, that meant a lot. Um, and, and just that I wasn't alone. Many of you were sick as well. Many of you had been through the same, ugh. <laughs> and I just, I, I had so much appreciation for it, as did my husband. He thanks you as well, because keeping my spirits up through all this, it is a huge chunk of my healing and why I didn't get depressed and why I didn't get sicker. And people forget that depression is an illness, that one illness will weaken you and open you up to additional illness. And the hardest thing when you're already down is to take another kick. And I, I did struggle with my depression through this. Um, some medicines, some cough medicines, some breathing medications interact with you mentally. And while you think you're delirious because you've got the flu, the reality is it could be your drug. And I, I took a couple of meds that messed with my head and I had times where I felt like my skin was crawling. I had times where I couldn't face getting out of bed simply because I was so sad, not just sick, sad, mentally sick. And your encouragement, your messages helped me push through that and get to a point where I wanted to be healthy and the gremlins didn't mire me in and make it worse. And I thank you for that. Um, 
So, <laughs> getting back on track. During my illness, I was still hosting my fundraiser for the paperback writer Little Free Library. Um, my friend Terry has a Little Free Library up in La Crosse, Wisconsin that she runs off of a bicycle. She is trying to raise funds to buy a trike for more stability so that when she's out at the park, when she goes to the hospital, when she visits schools, her bike doesn't tip over and take her whole bookcase with it. She is an advocate of literacy, as I am. Um, she dispenses books for free to anybody who wants them. And I am very proud to be a part of her fundraiser to help build funds up so that she can order a trike and so that she can continue to do what she loves, bicycling and handing out books to kids and adults alike. We've made our first donation. During my illness, you guys all still placed orders. Thank you so much. And I was able to get those orders right out to folks. Uh, we've made our first donation. That donation was in the amount of $461.39. I am so proud. I am so grateful. I'm tearing up just talking about it. Um, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was the single largest donation she had received to date. That made a huge impact. She has been able to do her down payment. She has got her bike ordered. We do have a thousand dollars, just over a thousand dollars more to go. And so I'm extending my fundraiser. Um, still 10% of all yarn sales in my shop for the month of February are going to Paperback Rider. 50% of the exclusive colorway sales are going to Paperback Rider. We're donating 50% of every skein of her exclusive colorway. 50% uh, I'm extending even further, folks. I want to make this goal. 50% of all pattern sales, every one of my designs, is going to Paperback Rider through the month of February. That includes the barn dance shawl that is going to release. Our test knitters are done and I thank every one of you. You guys, you did a fantastic job with this test knit and you all worked autonomously, independently. I, I'm so grateful that I didn't have to chase anyone. <laughs> Normally I don't chase anyone anyway, but being ill and my head was not in the game and you guys kept knitting and you guys kept asking questions and you guys found problems and we made those edits, we made those updates and we got those out to you. And I have a number of you that successfully finished the shawl. I'm starting to get pictures now. They're beautiful. Oh, you guys made me so proud. You made my design look so beautiful. And the feedback I got about the pattern and the little changes that we made have made it so much easier to knit. I have check boxes, I have stitch counts, everything's been tested and is accurate, and I'm launching this design. 50% of all pattern sales are going to go to Paperback Rider Little Free Library. Help me raise the money, guys. I know that $6 from you for this pattern, $3 of that's going to go to Terry. That's more books in more kids' hands, and that excites me, and you get a beautiful wrap shawl in the process. Um, what have I been knitting? <laughs> Not too much. You wouldn't believe how exhausted I was. I did get a little bit of knitting done in six weeks. <laughs> I, I don't ever remember being this sick my whole life. Um, I did work a little bit on my knitting and I'm excited about the knitting that I did get done. Probably because any accomplishment was so huge. I have been working on my acrylic socks, my wool-free socks, and I got the second one. Really, I started it and I am up to my gusset. Here's my first one. There it is. That's my first one. Boy, my feet look large in these. <laughs> and the second one's ready to go to the gusset. I stopped really because I wanted to measure and make sure that it was time for the gusset and review the pattern. Uh, it's one thing to just knit stockinette in the round. It's a whole nother thing to start doing increases and make sure you've got everything in the right place. Once I get through that gusset and the heel flap, this is just going to be done. And I'm excited about that to have accomplished these wool free socks. The yarn is uh, Premier Yarns wool free sock. And uh, is there a colorway noted? 
Number four, Meadows, Meadows. Really, the hand on this is lovely. It's very squishy. I, I can't see to count. Um, it's at least eight ply, at least. And there's a lot of air twisted into this. This is a, is it fully acrylic? Let me check here. 93% acrylic, 7% PBT. If anybody out there knows what PBT is, please let me know. I'm, I'm interested in learning more about that. The colors are vibrant. They're very pretty. The pattern is very pretty. I'm, I'm just doing a vanilla sock in it, but the color print pattern is very pretty. And I'm enjoying it. They're soft and lovely. Um, it's... Uh, I'm excited to see a quality product out there that has an affordable price point that offers a wool-free option for people with wool allergies. It's a nice product and I think it's important that we honor the non-wool products out there, that we do look at what acrylic is offering us. I find beautiful product all the time. I happen to be a huge fan of Vanna's Choice. Her color line is exquisite. Every color goes with every color and it's a lovely product. It holds up beautifully and it doesn't have the the tacky hand that most people relate to acrylic with. That having been said, <laughs> I had started a Vanna's Choice uh, yarn sweater. I was doing the Daylin pattern um, it's a top-down sweater, it, it, very lovely pattern. I love the color of the yarn. I like Vanna's Choice. I like the pattern. What I didn't like was the fabric that I was getting. And I had talked to you guys about I needed to make some decisions about this, that I wasn't sure why I had stopped, whether it was about calculating the armhole depth and making my edits, or whether it was about the fabric that I was getting. and in one glorious moment where the clouds parted and I decided, oh, I'll work on my sweater, I pulled it out and I gave it a fair assessment. Vanna's Choice runs just a little bit thicker than a classic worsted. And I was treating the pattern as a worsted. I had gauged up my needle. I had recalculated for size. I hadn't gone far enough. The fabric that I was getting purely because of my needle choice, purely because of my gauge choice, was very thick. And I'm talking bulletproof. <laughs> it could stand up on its own. It, it really was an exceptionally durable, thick fabric and not quite what I was hoping for for this sweater. I have opted to pull it out. Um, I'm disappointed. I really like the pattern. I really like the yarn. It's not going to be a good pairing. If I, and I did sit down and I swatched, and unfortunately for me to get the fabric that I preferred, I was going to have to ramp all the way up to a size 10 and a half US needle. That's big. And that meant that I was going to have to actually um, recalculate the sweater and create a smaller size because the gauge was so far off. Instead of reverse engineering the sweater completely and having to recreate a smaller size of the sweater, I'm just going to walk away. I, I'm just going to walk away. I'm itching to knit a sweater. It's the weirdest sensation to have starditis about such a large project. <laughs> I, I look at a sweater and I think, oh my goodness, that's a lot of work. And then I make a huge shawl and don't think anything of it. My head is... <laughs> Mental illness does spread right through into knitting, doesn't it? Um, so I, I'm itching to make a sweater. I have a sweater quantities worth of yarn in an orange. But I already have an orange sweater. I have several orange sweaters. I am addicted to orange. Uh, so I, I'm, the temptation to cast that on just isn't there. I'm, I'm not feeling it right now. I'm going to let orange sit for a little while and I'll come back to it. I actually ordered some yarn um, from my dear friend Shannon over at Supernatural Yarns as part of her current yarn club. Uh, she does 
yarn clubs all the time. She, I think she's doing at least two a year, possibly as many as four. She often does them as fandoms. Um, that's how I met her. I met her through the Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup on Ravelry. And she has always just produced beautiful, beautiful yarn. Her current club has some lovely colors in it. I actually just got yarn uh, from the first installment. This is a sock yarn of hers. It is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It is 463 yards over 100 grams, and this colorway is called Festral. Beautiful, beautiful bluey teals and navy blend. Gorgeous. I love her colors. I love her eye of color. It has a lovely silver gray kind of overtone to it. She really was my inspiration. She was the one that made dyeing seem feasible and desirable and something that I wanted to do. And she was my mentor and stepped me through how to make this happen. And I pay that forward at every opportunity I can. If you have questions about dyeing, if you have questions about becoming an indie dyer, if you have questions about selling your yarn, reach out to me. I am here for you. I will give you the resources that you need to make that happen in your life. Um, as always, Shannon, thank you. Your colors are gorgeous. I just love her yarns. I'm going to pop up her business card here for you. Try and get it as straight and glare-free as possible. And of course, there'll be links in my show notes and everywhere else for you for this. Um, please support your indie dyers when you have the opportunity. They are small businesses and they're artists. They really are. They, they really are. I love this. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. I just had to have it. Aren't we silly animals? <laughs> love it. Um, so also I have been working very here and there on my squircle socks. So I had received permission from General Hog Buffer months ago now. I've, I've lost six weeks. Um, to do a demonstration for you guys of the squircle sock technique. And in order for me to do that demonstration, I need to have the socks knit to various stages so that I can demo the next step for you. Um, I have, I think, gosh, probably six socks on the needles just for that purpose, including one at a totally different gauge so that I can show you how to do the math necessary if you want to knit them at a different stitch count. His pattern, General Hog Buffer's pattern, is technically a formula. It's not written out as a strict pattern, but a formula is a wonderful thing because it's very flexible and allows you to make changes. I hope to advance on that project. Um, I very much want to film that demonstration for you. I know a number of you are waiting for that demonstration, and I am so sorry for the delays. Um, it's it's important to me that I follow through and do what I promise. So I'm working on it. I did not get a lot of work done on that. It does require some cognitive <laughs> capacity, which I was lacking. I, I was so sick, I didn't even read. I didn't even read. Some days it was too much to watch TV. I would just sit and it would be noise and, and too much light and too much color and too much movement coming out of that TV. And I, it was like an assault and I would turn it off and my whole focus would just be on stroking my dog's ears and trying not to cough. <laughs> it was a rough illness. When I did start to come out of the clouds, when I did have moments of clarity, I worked on my how to eat an elephant blanket. And I'm very proud of this. I have actually made good progress and I'm excited to show you what all I got done. If I can find it. This is starting to get really sizable and I'm having to fold it a hundred different ways <laughs> to get it all, all together here. So the last time I talked to you guys about it, I had finished this orange square right here and I had put my progress keeper in the black down here of this square. I've since finished this green and purple square, this pink and gray square, this green, this yellow, this teal, and then blue and blue 
and brown and another green and purple and gray and another yellow and this lovely Easter egg kind of white and creamy purple and, and yellow and another brown and a green and a purple. I get a lot done. I get a lot done. Um, looks like technically about a row and a half. That's exciting to me. Um, right now, while I'm here, while I've got you guys here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop this down in the corner of the next square that I would cast on so that I know that I talked to you guys about the purple square and I know where I left off. So my progress keeper is where I will be putting the next square. It's beautiful and I'm excited to really be working on this now. I have 35% of it done. That's assuming a blanket of 24 by 24 of these little squares and I really feel accomplished. I feel like I'm gaining some size on this and it's beautiful. I, I can actually drape it down over my entire lap now. It's a good lapgan size, but I'm going bigger. I, I really, my dream is to get a king size quilt out of this. And <sighs> funny thing about illness, and a lot of things fall into perspective. <laughs> I really panicked for a while. I, I was so concerned that I was going to get pneumonia again. And it was touch and go for a couple of days where I, I was really starting to exemplify symptoms. And um, it, it was scary. It was scary. And if you've ever had pneumonia, I've had it four times. Every time you get it, it weakens your body more permanently. That is my understanding. That's what my doctors have told me, that once you get it, you're more susceptible to it and it's going to be harder to recover from every time. So the idea that I could get pneumonia again and be in a position where I could really, really be in harm's way made things like this very important. I'm sorry, I got a battery alert on my, on my camera here and I wanted a quick plug in. Um, as I was saying, being sick like that really put certain things into perspective and it made certain things more important to me. I consider my How to Eat an Elephant Blanket an heirloom project. I know that it will exist past me. And to have things that were not done bothered me. And I really had to put things into perspective for myself and realize what mattered and what didn't. And of all the projects that I have going right now, that was the only one that really mattered. And it's put new emphasis on what I want to work on, what I want to do and what matters to me. And so it's getting a lot more love than it used to get. And um, I, I look at it more in terms of how far will I get and can I do it all? And I look at it more in terms of shape so that if I have a tragedy in my life, there will be a shape. It'll, it'll be close enough to a, a finished shape that I will be able to finish whatever's there. That sounds scary and weird and um, fearful and I, 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 that may make a lot of people uncomfortable that I was... Um, concerned about my mortality or that yeah, it was only a flu, right? We never know in this world. We never know. And sometimes looking through the eyes of today may be it helps us live fuller, helps us see what's really important, helps us do the things that we need to do. Love each other. Make sure things are funded make sure that things are complete for other people, go the extra mile for other people. It's important. It's important to live your life the fullest that you can every day that you can. What else has been going on? So dying. I have not died. <laughs> I have not died. Um, yesterday was the first time I died yarn in well over a month. I had some custom orders I needed to do. Thank you guys very much for reaching out to me with your color requests. Um, 
I had some work that I needed to do for Unwound and I'm very excited to be sending a new colorway up to them as well as more yarns. I have a lot of plans to do a lot more dyeing. Uh, I have a huge order coming in this week. I placed my order yesterday. I, I did this big dye, got a, just about 50 skeins done yesterday and looked at my supplies. My head has been so far out of the game I didn't even know what I had. Um, sat down, went through my supplies, looked at my stocks, realized that I really needed to order in some yarn, placed my order. My head is so not in the game. Half an hour later I'm standing in the kitchen and I'm thinking, it's a hundred skeins of that base, okay, I, I, I need that. Oh my goodness, I ordered the wrong base. A hundred skeins of the wrong base. Panic. Of course, it's after business hours. I've placed the order online with my vendor. I don't know how that business operates. I don't know if they have a separate pick team from the team that handles orders. Panic? Oh my goodness, the panic. It's a wonder I didn't scream. I was so upset. Ran back into my studio, pulled open the computer again, emailed every single email contact I could find for the company. Please don't send me this yarn. Please substitute this item for this item. I have made a grave error. Please don't send me a hundred skeins of the wrong thing. Um, great company, fabulous company. Wool to die for. They're out of Virginia. Saturday night, customer service. After business hours, they got right back to me. They sent me the corrected invoice so that I could pay the change, the difference in the pricing and have sent the pick team changes to the order so that I get the right stuff. I am so grateful. I love Wool to Die For. I have worked with them nearly exclusively from the beginning and will continue to do so. Excellent customer service. They saved me from myself. Um, really a phenomenal product anyway, above and beyond. I have never had knots. I have never had splits. I have never had bad skeins. I've never had anything come across that felt like a reduced uh, quality to me. Um, very, very happy with the company and very grateful <laughs> to their late night, Saturday night customer service. Thank you, Wool to Die For team. Um, that was only a piece of that order. I have well over 300 skins of yarn coming in. I have a lot of dyeing coming up in the very near future and I'm excited to do that. I have also recently dyed yarn for my Patreons for this month. There has been a technical glitch over at Patreon and not all of the Patron charges have gone through yet. As a result, this episode should have been a Patreon drawing weekend. I should have been telling you who won this month's drawings. I don't have the data yet. I am looking forward to doing that for you. We're going to do that next weekend, and I am so sorry for the delay. Again, it is a technical problem over at the website. However, I can show you the yarn that's going to be going out. I was feeling very February. I was feeling very Valentine's Day, and so I created this. It's just pretty. It's kind of... It's red pink with lighter tones. It really is a variegated that goes all the way from a, a natural white all the way up to a red. It makes me happy. I hope it makes you happy too. I think it's really pretty. I haven't named it yet. I will come up with a name for the colorway and make sure that it is tagged appropriately for you guys. Um, I've got a fair amount of it. I have some extras. There's still time to get in on it. If you're looking at Patreon and you're thinking that you would like to support my efforts, pop on over. Uh, like I said, they haven't finished running the numbers yet for the month, so I don't have everybody in yet. But it's not too late to get in on the drawing levels. It's not too late to get in up on the subscription levels either and guarantee yourself a skein of this. I did have a couple of acquisitions. Um, I showed you the yarn already that I got from Supernatural Wools. I picked up some books recently. They're not particularly recent publications. I buy books all the time and sometimes they're older publications. 
it, either way, it's knitting. It's not like anything is out of date. Not not horribly anyway. You can always gain something. Yeah, a couple of these are like four or five years old. I haven't had a chance to go through them yet. I My head just hasn't been in the game. But I love books and I have books. And I'm actually going to a bookstore later this afternoon and I'm excited. Um, there's a used bookstore not too far from me that is fabulous. She has so many books. I bookstores make me happy anyway. She has so many books that every bookshelf is covered and she has stacks in front of the bookshelf. And you just grab a bottle of water and you go in and you plunk your butt down on the floor and you just sift through stacks and you would not believe the cool things that you find in there. The first book that I have to share with you guys today is The Knitter's Handbook, Yarn, Needle, Stitches and Techniques. This is so pretty. It's uh, got a number of stitch patterns in it, some edgings. It has information about trimmings and sequins and beads. It talks about all kinds of different shapes, how to accomplish uh, medallions and work from the center out, knitting in the round. Really, really beautiful stuff. It is, for the most part, a stitchinary. I love this and it has techniques in it as well if you want to learn about tension and gauge and buttonholes. I'm excited to really dig into this. It's very pretty. It's all full color photography and a lot of samples of knitting to see the patterns. The one drawback here that I'm seeing just cursory is that all of the patterns in here for stitches are written out. Oh, there we go. Reverse on the camera. They're written out here. There's not charting in here. As a rule, I prefer charting. It gives me a visual representation and it's much easier to spot when things don't match up, whether the knitting doesn't match up or if there's a typo in your book. When the instructions are only written out, uh, especially if it's done in the back and forth rather than in the round or only supplies one version of the instructions where it's back and forth or only in the round and not either or both. It's hard to spot an error, a typo, and typos happen even in really nice production books. I like the chart because I can convert it in my head to if I want to use the stitch in the round or if I only want to do it back and forth. With the with the written, you have to sit down and you have to knit it and chart it and rewrite it and work it out if you're going to make a change like that. That's, that's the only drawback I have with this. Um, otherwise, I, it's a really beautiful book. It, it talks about so many different things including eye cords and braids and cables and really beautiful. If you see this book out and about, I would recommend it. I don't have an author. I just have Hamlin up here in the in the top. Let's see if anything is declared. Eleanor Van Zant. Eleanor Van Zant is our author, our person here. Very nice, very pretty. Love the book. I also picked up a couple of sock books. I love socks. I love socks. Sock art, bold graphic knits for your feet. This has a lot of color work in it and I think that's what I was drawn to. Honestly, I don't remember purchasing these. Cough syrup. Yeah, scary stuff. Um, this has stuff written out and charted. I think it's written out. Let me take a look. I do see charts here. I'm not seeing it written out. So for this book, it's the exact opposite. This book has the charts, but it doesn't have the written instruction for the chart unless they've got it tucked back here in like an appendix. They do not. So for this particular book, if you love charts and you're not good with following the written instruction, this book is for you. If you like to have both so that you can reference and make sure you're doing it right, this one's charted only and not written. You know, I go both ways. I, 
I like to have both in place. I like to have the comparison just to make sure I'm fully understanding what's happening. And when I first started designing patterns, I wasn't a chart reader, I wasn't a chart writer, and so I only did things written out. And then once I learned charts, oh, they made everything so much easier, so much quicker for me to understand, and I loved it. Once I finally grasped how to handle, how to read charts and work from them, that was it. That's all I wanted to do. And now further down the line, and, and part of that is feedback from people who knit my patterns that saw that I used charts but didn't have things written out, and I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I wish from the beginning I had had the foresight to do both. But with more experience, I have learned really having it both written and charted is better for all of us. Not only does it help us with whatever our preference is, but it gives us that second reference point with which to compare and make sure we know what we're doing. I fall back on both. I, I prefer to have actually both sets of instructions there, and I really try to do that with my patterns. I have gone back on a couple of my other patterns and tried to include it. The only place that I don't is where the chart is so basic that it doesn't behoove anyone. That there's there's not enough data conveyed for it to make reasonable sense to have it there and take up the space. If you have one of my patterns that would benefit from charting, or we benefit from having instruction added and I have missed it in going back over, let me know, please. Um, I would love the opportunity to go back and make that more usable for you. I think that everybody should have full access to it, whatever their preference is. Not ditching on either of these books at all. You present your data the way you want to present your data and thank you for sharing it with us in any format you've got. The next book I have is Socks a la Carte Color Work. This is a, another, it's the second in a series is my understanding. Do I have the other one right here? Let me see if I do. Where is it? I'm not seeing it on my shelf. I, I must have it stored elsewhere, which is really strange for me. I'll have to take a look. But there was another one of these, and these are great because they're basically flip books where you get to choose what you want for the elements for each so that you can flip through and decide what you want for each section of your sock and choose exactly, make up your own pattern. There are thousands of variations in here. Probably not thousands. I'm probably going way beyond uh, the actual count, but there's a lot of variations that you can do, and they have some really interesting techniques in here. I, I love these because it's so mix and match. I think I talked to you guys about my Coexist socks, which was really a pick your path pattern that I, I'm pretty sure Coexist is available for free on Ravelry where I get to choose different fandoms and do a different section for every sock, and there's hundreds of variations of that, depending on what your preferences are. I love that. I love that I can go any way I want to with my knitting. If I want a different rib, if I want a different stitch, if I want to incorporate different colors, Everything is possible with knitting. Everything. You can go in so many different directions. This book is an example of that, especially for socks, which is a small project, something that you can really handle. It may be anywhere between 8 and 12 hours of knitting on a single sock, and that's not a huge sacrifice for an awful lot of bang in your life. You get to wear those all the time and make more. <laughs> I love socks. This book does have, let's see, it has charts. I'm not seeing if they're written out as well. Let me just skip through real quick here. A couple of these were real simple charts. Some of them are charted and some of them are written out. So, for example, these pages are showing some of the color work written out instruction, and then these pages are showing just charting. I'll have to dig in further to see if that information is elsewhere. Um, 
it, it may be elsewhere because it's broken up where different sections reference different sections. Let's see, back in the flip section, it just has the pictures so that you can visually design and it tells you where the instructions are. So some patterns are knit out or are written out and some patterns are actually charted and a few of them are both. Some of them are actually both and have the information written out for both. Either way, it's a knitting book and it makes me happy and Although I don't often knit stuff directly from patterns in books like this, it's a jumping off point, it's a creative point where I can sit down with the flippy pages on this and I can find a look that I like. I can play with it and I can select a design that I like and I may opt to knit that or it may trigger something and I may be like, that's a really neat sock, but what if that were a section of an isosceles triangle on a shawl or a wrap? And then I start grabbing my needles and I start grabbing my yarn and I start swatching out ideas and seeing where they take me. That's food for design and I love that. I love that. <laughs> Which is why I have such a huge collection of books and hardly ever knit anything out of them. Sometimes when I'm just starving for ideas, when I have starditis and I, I want to design something or I want to knit something, I just grab my books and I pile them up around me and I grab a mug of coffee and I start flipping through. Or sometimes instead of going with stitch patterns and shapes and ideas like that, I dive into my stash and I just start pulling out colors and laying them out next to each other and seeing how I like things interacting and how can I make that the most that it could be. That's fun, that's exciting, I enjoy doing that. Where will I be? I'm bouncing all over my sheet today and I'm sorry this is disjointed and talky and I just missed you guys and I'm excited to sit here and have an opportunity to talk to you. I am planning a trip back to La Crosse, Wisconsin in May. I'm very excited about that. I'll be going to the Unwound Artists and Yarn Shop May 23rd through May 26th. There's going to be a brunch as usual. I love our brunches and I love handing out swag. Swag is coming again, guys. I'm going to be doing a class and I'm really excited about the class because we're going to be talking about selecting hand dyed yarns. We're going to be talking about pairing them with projects and how to make choices to make that yarn absolutely pop. There's going to be a giveaway because I love doing giveaways. There's going to be a ton of yarn. I just told you guys I ordered an awful lot of yarn and I'm excited to be taking that up there as well as the launch of a new pattern and my DK minis. And I don't know if I've shown you guys the DK minis. Where are they? I have a whole basket of them right here. Bear with me one second. Everybody loves minis. Everybody loves minis. It's a little pop of color. It's like candies or marbles. They're just fun. And I found a base that's DK weight instead of fingering weight and I fell in love because you can do hats and gloves and mitts and scarves and all kinds of things. Sweaters, all kinds of things with DK weight. It's a very, very flexible weight where some people aren't comfortable working with fingering weight. It's a little too fine for their hands, too fine for their eyes. I know lately, I, I think I'm due for an eye exam. I think I'm ready for another script because my fingering weight yarns are looking a little bit finer than they used to. But DK weight is just shy of worsted. It's thicker than fingering and it's fun. So I'm launching a whole new line of DK Weight Minis. Aren't the colors fun and popping? And those are going to launch up at Unwound. So I'm very excited to be showing these off. That is everything and all that I've been doing. I'm so happy to be doing this again and I'm thrilled for the opportunity to sit down with you and have this chat and I can't wait to see what you guys have been doing. Thank you for your messages. Thank you for being in touch with me. Go and take a look and see if Barn Dance isn't something that you're interested in picking up. It's going to launch right out to you guys. Thank you to my test knitters. I love y'all and I can't wait to see you next week. Again, my apologies. I don't have the Patreon drawing because of that technical glitch. We're going to do that next episode. Until then, happy knitting, best of health to you all, 
and have a great week. Bye.